Hi, and welcome to the Sunday School Breakdown. I'm your host. I'm Wilman Murphy, and I'm one of the Sunday School teachers here at the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Where are we? We're located at 2870 Hetland Drive, and that's in East Point, Georgia. The 303, the 4, and the 4. Our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. Clayton Eugene Taylor Sr. He's the one closest to me. And our co-pastor is the Reverend Christopher E. Taylor Sr. And guys, you know what? Collectively, we bring you greetings and good tidings from the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church family. We do indeed welcome you to another edition of the Sunday School Breakdown. Oh yes, the world's most unique Sunday School experience by nine. Thank you for watching the lesson last week. I do appreciate you dearly and severely. But let's not stop there. Do me a huge favor. Call your friends. Send them a text message. Email them. Tweet them. And just let them know that the Sunday School Breakdown, oh yes, it is about to go down. This week's lesson, Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verses 10 through 21, Justice and the Marginalized. Fifth Sunday, making me work extra hard, extra week of studying and reading. And you know what? I love every minute of it. It's a good lesson. Simple lesson, but good. Ah, the praying hands reminds me that we need to pray. Today, we're going to use one of the short prayers that I receive every day. We're talking seven days a week. 365 days a year. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Let us pray. Most gracious and high holy Lord, I ask that you will help me to live the way that you want me to live. Let the words of my mouth and the actions of my heart be the same. If I speak about love, let me be loving. And if I quote scriptures, let me live the scriptures that I quote. Help me to be able to match my walk with my talk. It is in Jesus' matchless name, amen, amen, and amen. Nice to pray. Our theme, we're still in Unit 2. First Sunday in February, we'll go to Unit 3. Today, God is still the source of our justice. And last week, lesson we saw how our judicial system came about. And yes, indeed, God was and still is the source of justice. Today's lesson text, justice and the marginalized. Well, what does the word marginalized mean? Meet me at the wall. Now wait, if you don't feel like walking, I understand. But those of you that feel like walking, but please, please, meet me at the wall. Come on. Marginalize. A person or a group or a concept 
a way of thinking treat it as insignificant or peripheral. That means that certain people, certain groups, certain mindsets will see others as being insignificant or peripheral. Just means just standing on the outside looking in. You're not part of the group. You're not part of the in crowd. And this item two, to put or keep someone or a group of persons in a powerless or unimportant position within a society or a group. That sounds like me and some of you that perhaps may look like me. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go black and white. No, no, no. But people are marginalized. They're put in a powerless position, a position of unimportance. Their decisions, their values, it doesn't matter. So in our lesson today, God is speaking against people being marginalized. You see, God is an all-knower and all-seeing God, all-powerful God. So God wanted people to be treated fairly, not to be marginalized. The lesson text, justice and the marginalized. We can almost change this to say justice for the marginalized. You see, God totally understood the haves and the have-nots. Meet me at the wall. Come on. Come on. Many of the haves were looking down on those that had not. They had come up and they weren't willing to assist others to get to their position, their status. Also, the haves were keeping people or a group of people in situations of poverty, keeping them marginalized. And God wasn't happy. So God put rules into place on how to treat the poor and the needy. In today's lesson, we're going to see the rules and regulations that God himself put into place for the helpless and for the needy. After all, God is the source of justice. We'll see today in our lesson people that need to borrow money. This young man is saying, I am broke as a joke. Meaning I have nothing. On the other hand, the young lady has money. She has money. She has dollar bills, y'all. And she's willing to make this gentleman a payday loan, which means he borrowed money on Friday well, the next payday, the following Friday, 
she's expecting her money back. Oh yeah, with interest. Here's another scenario. This gentleman, yes, he has money. He's a predatory lender which means he seek out people and will lend them money. But you won't be able to afford his interest rates. And he will end up taking your possessions. God is putting rules in place for this type of behavior. And then there's a Another situation. Yes, the young brother is still broke as a joke. When it comes to money, well, he's a have not. The gentleman behind me, he said, let's make some money. He's a loan shark. He will loan the other gentleman money. But he's not a bank. He will come and collect the money from you. Actually, he has a repo man that will go and collect his money. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 10 it reads when thou dost lend thy brother anything thou shalt not go into his house to fetch his pledge. What is the pledge? The pledge is the collateral. God is saying don't go and take the collateral. Allow him to bring the collateral to you. Don't go and fetch it. Allow the one that's doing the borrowing, the have not, some dignity. Meet me at the wall. Now, if you don't feel like walking, you can sit. But those of you that don't mind walking, please meet me at the wall. The, the lender here, the repo man, coming to collect for his manager, his shark buddy for the long shark. But this gentleman saying, I can't pay you half. I can't pay you anything. He doesn't have it to pay. God is saying, don't go in and try to take it. The pledge, his collateral. You see, once you loan money, you are able to collect collateral. Think of our lending process today, homeowners and car buyers and whatever. Whatever you buy, many times that you buy it on time and on term, that's the collateral. Your homes, your cars, etc. God is saying, allow that person to bring the collateral outside to you. Because, see, if you go inside the person's house, you may see something else that you would want and not what's been offered to you as collateral. You may take something that the person inside the house really needs. Verse 11 says, Thou shalt stand abroad, and the man to whom thou lend shall bring out the pledge abroad unto thee. You're supposed to stand on the outside, on the peripheral, and allow 
the borrower to bring the pledge to you. Don't go and take it. Respect for other people. Give the borrower some dignity. Stand down. Show some patience. Show some brotherly love. In verse 12. And if the man be poor, then thou shalt not sleep with his pledge. What does that mean? Will you meet me at the wall? I'm walking. Yes, indeed, I'm talking. Ah, the late Duke. That was my dad's favorite dude. He would watch John Wayne all day and all night. My dad was bench watching John Wayne before it was trending to be bench watching. <laughs> but God is saying, don't sleep with the man's pledge. The pledge is the offering. And see, the man is poor, verse 12. So he doesn't have anything much to offer. Therefore, he offers his clothing. He offers his garments. But God said, give the garment back to him. Don't you sleep in another man's garments. Don't you hold them. You see, Israel, Judah, Jerusalem, was kind of, they were in desert-like territories. And at night, when the sun goes down, it gets very cold. I know some of you all been to places like Arizona, Vegas even, yeah, even California. At night when the sun goes down, the temperature drops drastically. Therefore, the man that doesn't have needs his garments to to keep himself warm at night. Well, if I'm the lender, when am I supposed to return this garment to him if I can't sleep with it? Good question. Verse 13. In any case, thou shalt deliver him the pledge, the collateral, again when the sun goeth down that he may sleep in his own garment and bless thee. Wait a minute. Now, how is he going to bless me? After all, he's a poor man. How is he going to bless me? What does he have to offer? Guys, He's a have not. How is he going to bless me? How? <laughs> Watch this. You see, if you return the garment, the collateral, before sunset, that person will bless you. How? He's going to pray. He's going to pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to pray to the God of the Israelites and the God of the We Are Lights. And by him praying to God, he'll probably tell God, this lender treated me justly. God, this lender treated me with respect. 
God, this lender allowed me to keep my dignity. God, I want you to bless him. God, I want you to bless his family. And watch what happens. Look at the end of verse 13. And it shall be righteousness unto thee before the Lord thy God. That person praying for you, if you a lender, and he's telling God how well you treated him. He's telling God that you are indeed a brother's keeper. Well, God will impute righteousness upon you. You see, whether you're a have or a have not, you do need God's righteousness. You do. I do. That's how a person that has nothing can bless you. God blesses acts of righteousness. In verse 14, Thou shalt not oppress and hire servant that is poor or needy, whether he be of thine brethren or of thine strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. God just gave us examples about the lending process. Now he's switching to the employers. Most employers are hers. God wants to be sure that the employer is treating the employee with godly justice. Why? God is the source of justice. So in 14, God is saying to for the employer, treat your employees right. Do not oppress them. Do not overwork them. Do not try to break their backs. Now that's what Pharaoh did back in the days of Egypt. Pharaoh wanted to break the backs of the Israelites. And God wiped them out because of that. So God is saying, don't oppress. Don't beat them down. And God even takes it a step further. He says, it doesn't matter whether it's a brethren, which means a fellow Israelite. It doesn't matter. Or if the person is a stranger, meaning an immigrant. Now, you know, here in these United States of America, You saw, I had to force myself to say United States. Why is that? Why is that? Because our states are so divided. I have to now consciously think that is, we are still called the United States of America. Question. Are we still called the United States of America? Are we? It seems so divided at this point. Here in these United States, I have to think. We have a problem at the border. We have a situation at the border with immigrants wanting to come 
to this country. So God was saying, treat the immigrants fairly, 14b. Those that are inside of the gates, those that were inside of the community of Israel, inside the community of Judah, Jerusalem, God was saying, if they are working for you, treat them with respect. They are your employees. Treat them the right way. And verse 15. And at his day thou shalt give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down, for he is poor, and setteth his heart upon it. Meet me at the wall. Come on. I'm walking. Yes, indeed, I'm talking. The employers, treat your employees with dignity. And do this because most of your employees are day laborers. Pay them that just do at the end of the day. Give them the money that they have earned. You see, they're working day to day, looking for a pay to buy food on the way home to take home to their families. Pay the man. Your servants, those that are taking care of you your families and your guests, pay them. Give them the right respect. Isn't it wonderful that we have a God that think about all of these different types of things? How to treat strangers, how to treat employees, how to treat the poor. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? I like this picture. The butler. If you have a butler, well, I can make this announcement. You are indeed a have and not a have not. Oh, I'm not hating. I'm simply serving the facts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pay them before sundown. Why? 15B. Lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. Remember verse 13, where a poor man can pray, and God hears prayers and count it as righteousness for you. Well, on the other hand, in 15b, if you don't pay him before sundown, that same person get pray to God and tell on you. Not that he has to because God sees and knows all anyway. But he will cry out to God how you mistreated him, how you worked him all day long. And yet, you withheld his pay. Well, God will count that as a sin against you. 
because God has given stipulations to pay him and the time to pay him so that he could go and stop at the store and buy food to take home to his family before the sun goes down. Pay the man. We don't want it to be counted as sin against us. And verse 16. And the father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. You see, for every man shall be put to death for his own sin. God is saying there's a one man, one soul theory. Fathers have to give an account for their own sins. Sons and daughters and spouses have to give an account for their own sins. This is a little bit of contradictory going on here. We do know back in the book of Joshua, chapter 7, verses 16 through 26, where Akana and his whole family were put to death because of him stealing. After God had given instruction, do not steal, do not take from this battle. And yet he had all types of silver and stuff. And Joshua made him confess because bad things was happening by him stealing was creating problems for the whole community. And Joshua went and found the loot. The whole family were put to death because of that action. But here God is saying one man, one soul. Don't blame the children for the acts of the father. Don't blame the father and the mother for the acts of their adult children. No. One man, one soul, your own responsibility. And verse 17, thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to play it. Don't pervert the judgment. Don't twist judgment. Don't flip the script. Do justly. God is putting provision in place for the stranger, the immigrants, the fatherless, the orphan, little orphan Annie. nor take a widow's raiment for a pledge. The widow, the husbandless, don't take her clothing for a pledge if she needs to borrow a payday loan. Don't treat her that way. In the picture, all the way over, the first one. I guess that'll be to the left, right? I love that act of kindness. I love that act of mercy. I love that brotherly love. The stranger. The orphan. And the widow. God put rules in place for protection for those groups of people. And verse 18. But thou shalt remember, oh yes, God is telling them why. He's talking to his Israelites and he's talking to us, we are lights. God is saying in verse 18, but thou shalt remember. Do you remember? That thou wast a bondman in Egypt. And the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore, I command thee to do this thing. God is making provision for the strangers, the immigrants, for the fatherless, the orphans, for the widows, 
the husbandless and sonless. Please meet me at the wall. Come on. Yeah, we're doing some wall walking today. My cousin, I tell you, that dude been crazy forever. Shout out to you, bro. God is recalling their past into remembrance. You see, so many of us, once you have become a hell, you forget where you came from. You forget who brought you over. You forget who raised you up. God is recalling into that recollection. He's saying, like the late Michael Jackson, remember the time when you yourself was a have not. God is saying, remember the time when you were slaves. Remember the times when Pharaoh was oppressing you. Remember the times when you had to work all day and all night for a little something to eat. Remember the times when you couldn't drink water unless someone gave water to you. He's recalling into memory their struggles. God is saying, remember the time when you yourself were held in bondage. This is one cool picture. Listen. You can almost hear the chains a bondage. God is telling his people, don't forget where you came from. God is telling you, he's telling me, don't forget who brought us out. And because of that, the last part of verse 18 said, therefore, I command thee to do this thing. What is the thing that God wants us to do? Verse 19. When thou cuttest down thy harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, the immigrant, it shall be for the fatherless, the orphans, and it shall be for the widow, the husbandless. God is making provisions for all people. And those that have are obligated to help provide justice for those that have not. When you are cutting down your wheat, and if you forget a spot, don't double back and fetch it. Leave it for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widows. In 19b, why? That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. God said, do this commandment and ye shall be blessed. Verses 20 and 21 and we're going to walk out of here. Verse 20. And when thou beatest thine olive tree, 
Thou shalt not go over the bowels again. It shall be for the stranger, the immigrant. Yes, you can say that with me. For the fatherless, the orphans, and for the widow, the husbandless. When you are collecting the olives, and you beat the olive tree. But God is saying, don't overstrike. Leave some hanging so that others can come behind and have something to eat. God is providing for his people. He's a providing, loving, merciful, wonderful, awesome God. God is making a way. After all, he is a way maker. <laughs> okay, we almost done. In verse 21, And when thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard, Thou shalt not glean it afterwards. It shall be for who? The stranger, the immigrant. And for the fatherless, the orphans. And for the widow, the husbandless. God is providing a program for the welfare of the poor and the needy. A program for the welfare of the people. A welfare program. Guys, you know, we haven't created anything. God provided everything that we ever need. You see that? Did you, did you get it? God be thinking. <laughs> wow, how awesome is that? A program for the welfare. Okay, forgive, forgive my silliness, but that just struck me. I didn't think about that until just now. That revelation just came in. You witnessed it live. Look at verse 21 again. He said, when thou gatherest the grapes of thine vineyard, thou shalt not glean, right? Remember Ruth, Boaz, and Naomi. Well, Ruth would come in the evening and glean the food that was left over. So behind me, this is Ruth. And she's, yeah, she's eating the grapes. But she will take some back home to um, Naomi. God is providing for them. They're part of the program. You see, God has made rules for the lending process, for the employer-employee situations. God has made rules for landowners and for farmers and how to allow their abundance. To be a blessing to others. Yes. God has provided for the. For the haves. And. The have nots. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Okay. Isn't it wonderful. How God has made so many provisions for us. It's like God knows everything that we're going to ever need. 
I'm going to pledge allegiance to God. I pledge allegiance to one nation of believers under God. Indivisible. United in Christ. And justice for all. Guys, that's our lesson for today. Next week's lesson. Ooh, guys. This is a good lesson. Second Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 9, and verses 13 through 15. Season 2022. Whoa. Lesson 10, Nathan condemns David. Ooh, I want this one. You guys come back. I want this one. I do. February 6th, the first Sunday in February. Wow, time is flying by. But guys, seriously, seriously, I want this lesson. Now this is lesson with David and Bathsheba and Uriah, and Nathan. In fact, let's just do this lesson right now. Hi, and welcome to the... <laughs> okay, guys, let us wash up. Let us remember to mask up with appropriate love. We know this new strand is really creating havoc on people. So please, please, wash and sanitize, sanitize, Sanitize. Oh, yeah. Cue up the music. Bam. <laughs> okay, let's get out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching the Sunday School Breakdown. I'm your host. And remember, share the channel. Why? Guys, it's free, 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 free. Thank you so much for watching. We do appreciate you dearly and severely. Do me a favor until next week. I want you all to be blessed. Do your best to stay safe. And by all means, let's remain encouraged. Be thankful. And always grateful. You all have a good night.